Alright, uh, hi everyone. Oh, welcome back. Uh, welcome to back to week six of our tutorial. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful time doing your assignment three. I I hope you guys had a great time doing assignment three and now on to assignment four. For those of you who haven't started assignment four, please get started because I know some of you have started pulling your hair. So it's better to get started early so that you don't crunch on the very last minute. Am I muted? That's a bit weird. Let me check. Mm, do you guys hear me? Okay, sure. Thanks, Derek. Okay, my God. All right. Um. Anyways, so I guess I'll just uh let you know what's today's agenda. Today's agenda. I'll spend the first hour from like until like twelve. Uh, 1 p.m. to talk about dictionary. So to, if you haven't done the exercise yet, it's okay. Basically, uh, the first part of this exercise is basically trying to show you guys the behaviors that a dictionary have and how dictionaries are quite different from lists or sets that we discussed uh, last week. And then we're gonna also talk about anagram. I'm just gonna split you guys into smaller breakout groups and do the anagram, anagram question, but this time using a dictionary and this time, your input might have a space. For example, anagram is still an anagram for anagram. Lastly, for part T9, I will skip it. I will not discuss it in today's tutorial. However, I strongly encourage you guys to do it on your own time, especially question D, because question D is like the types of question that you might want, that you can probably see in your practical exams. Albeit not the PE tomorrow, the maybe PE2. So, um, as usual, I have uh, actually for this part, right, I will, I have made it into several Python tutor visualizations. So let's just dive into it. Uh, my visualizations is like, uh, my code will be slightly different from this. It's just for flow, but then there should be no significant differences. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the first part of your, our code today. So today we are gonna, uh, we will be learning on how to convert tup sequences like tuples and lists into dictionaries. Now, if you can see right here, right, we have a tuple, oops, a tuple of tuples where inside the tuple there are pairs. And then when we, we are trying to convert it into a dictionary, right, okay. So um, just as usual, like what do you think when we try to convert this tuple into a dictionary, right, what will be the dictionary be? Type your answers in the Zoom chat. Anyone? What will dict A be? What will dictionary A be? Seriously, yeah, no one wanna. Ch All right, uh, okay, thanks, Derek. Hi, Hong. Uh, Ye Jie. So yeah, uh, basically correct. So like, if you see, um, sequences of pairs, like this, basically you will the first. The first one will be the key, and then the second one will be the value, something like this. But uh, right. Remember when you do a list, right? Your in your. The, this orange box over here by default will be 0, 1, 2, 3 and onwards, basically a normal index. But then here it will be um, the first uh, object in the spare tuple, pass sequence. So to access the content, right, you do, you to, call, to call the object, right, you simply uh, dig A and then like the square brackets and then like the key that you want to access. So in this case, I want to access A. The value of a which is 2 so if i print take a2 right it will give me 2 but then because this is a dictionary it does not have like a numerical index per se so like if i print dig a2 like this right it will give me a key error because it doesn't exist here okay the name of the error is key error okay please take note all right any questions so far i think this one is the very basic one what if there are three items in a tuple? Um, 
I mean, you can try. If I record, you cannot, if I'm not mistaken. So A, two, three. If I record correctly, you cannot do that. It must be a sequence. Okay. Okay, so see like this, like, dictionary update sequence element zero has length of three, two is required. So when we deal with dictionaries, right, when we try to convert tuples and list into dictionaries, it must be very specific lah, that you must only take in sequences, uh, a pairs, pair of objects. So the same case as this one lah, this one is like the next part, B. If you can see, right, this is actually a pair of sequences as well. All right, we have one A and then tuple two, three, pair four. Okay, so when I convert this to a dictionary, I'll get a one for A and then like two, three is my key accessing four. I think the interesting part here is that, um, the interesting part about this, right, is that you can e even, right, you can actually like combine several sequences into one. So for example, I can like create a tuple of lists. What else that I can do? Perhaps I want to do like inside, even inside, I want to mix it up. Or perhaps, so like if you can see here, there's a tuple, there's a list, and then it's enclosed inside a tuple. Maybe another one is like a list. list. And then like inside there's a tuple and list. All, all these combinations right, are possible. Okay, so see like all of them are possible and it, it all will yield the same result. So as long as you have a sequence and inside the sequence are pairs, like sequence, uh, a collection of sequences where they are in pairs, 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 right? then you can convert it into a dictionary, but then it must be strictly pairs. Back to this. So again, uh, I print dictionary B and I'm accessing the value of dictionary B from the tuple and it gives me four. Okay, so far any questions regarding like creating a new dictionary, accessing things and stuff? So does it doesn't matter if lists or tuples as long as they come in pairs, correct? I think that's the important thing, doesn't matter, as long as they come in pairs, in a sequence. Must it be, must it be a string for the pairs? No, they're not a string. See like, you can see there are numbers, there are things. Okay, I think some fun fact is that, remember last week I mentioned like, the keys must be immutable, meaning the keys cannot be list or dictionary, but then the values can be a dictionary or a list. The keys cannot be immute, cannot be mutable, but the values can be mutable. Can there be none in the pairs? Um, why not? Like, like say this one. I edit this. See, it's just like it works. Okay, you can have none. It's just like. None is just like a object and you just put it there, indicating that uh, there's nothing here. Okay. All right, next next part is uh, iterating through uh, iterating through a dictionary. I think this one is the most important part because like, um, you remember like stuples and lists, you can actually iterate through them. So a dictionary is also a sequence, right? Meaning that you can also iterate through a dictionary, but the way we iterate through a dictionary is slightly different. So I think this one is already pretty self-explanatory for the for line seven to line ten over here. If you print, if you want to print the keys, it means the ones in the orange box. Let me draw out my pen. If you want to print the keys, you simply like dictionary b dot keys bracket bracket. And it will basically convert this into a list. Print, see like the value of key changes in one, and then like iterate again, the key changes to the tuple, and then now I'm printing it. All right. Same for, same for values. Values basically, I'll just take the yellow part and just print whatever is inside the yellow part, okay? 
you can see in the global frame, the value is changing. Now I initiate a new variable, which is A, and then four. Now I think the interesting part here is the K, this part over here. Like, um, what does it mean by like K comma V and then dictionary B dot items, right? What it means that it's gonna iterate through the dictionary one. Uh, it's gonna iterate through the dictionary one by one lah, uh, as pairs. So remember like this form over here. So in this case, dig B dot items will convert this dictionary into something similar like this. So it's gonna be a pair, seek pair of pair. It's gonna they're gonna create tuples. So in this case, it will create a tuples of one A, and then like uh two, three, four. I hope you guys can see my screen because it's yellow, right? And so like when I do like K comma V, right, equals to this and then K comma V equals to this. So for every iteration, K will be equated to one, V will be equated to A for A. K will be equated to one, V will be equated, to, oh sorry. K will be equated to tuple two, three and then V will be equated to four. So we'll see that in action. Uh, let me just clear this. Let me redraw the boxes. So for keys, it's gonna be this. For values, it's gonna be this. But then for items, it's gonna be the entire box over here. Okay, so print. See like the K and V value is one and four. And I print them. Then I iterate to the next one, CK goes to the next value, which is this tuple, V is 4, and then it's going to be print to 4. Okay, so what's happening is that it's just going to unpack the values. Just make sure, take note that this one, right, is two variables instead of one. For more clarity, I think I'm just going to um, copy this over here. Instead of print, uh, unpacking them as K and V, I'm gonna just like put this one variable, like pop, pop out. I'm gonna print. Now, if you can, if I run the code, see, like I have a dictionary over here. I create a dictionary, tada. I print the dictionary like this, and then now I trade through the items. Um, see, like the variable papa is referring to the tuple, so it will convert this into a pair of tuples, and then I print it. Come one, none, and then the next tuple is this two, four, and then two, three, four. Any questions so far? Because if you don't have any questions, I have a question for you. The question is, now we know that it, you can iterate through keys, values, and items. But I think the biggest question is like, what happens if I iterate through the dictionary directly without calling keys, values, or items? That's my question for you. Uh, if you know the answer, write it in the Zoom chat. If you don't know, just write, you don't know. Write, okay, I don't, because I don't read minds. And if you just want to make a guess, please make a guess. Like, seriously, the wilder your guess is, the better. Allow. Any guesses what's gonna this gonna print? What will far print? We've seen like keys, values, items. What happened if I just iterate through the dictionary as per normal? Okay, so there's someone that said error, there's someone said the list of it. Alright. Var JK don't know. It prints out the keys. Okay, interesting theory. Blank. Okay, so in fact, there's actually an output. So thank you for the answers. It's okay. If you don't know, then you'll know today. Which is, if you can see, see, uh, yes, var will actually act, uh, var will be printing the keys. It will, 
be exactly the same as printing keys. Oops, I got water on my iPad. Uh, but, uh, okay, this one is the same as this. Okay. So, what can we learn today? If, if a dictionary acts like a sequence, meaning, for example, like for item in dictionary, or like I, um, if item in dictionary, This part will refer to the keys of the dictionary. Why is this important to learn and important to understand? Because some of you often make this mistake where you, you try to find the value of the key. Um, you want to check whether uh, as an object or an item is inside the dictionary or, or not. And then you just like do this, like if item in dictionary, which is not true lah, cause like if you just do like item in dictionary, it only checks for the keys. It doesn't check for the values inside the dictionary. So if you want to check the values, you should do use this instead. Dig dig p dot values, which we're gonna see later on lah. Okay. So in this case, I think I'm just gonna. Okay, I think that's. I think yeah lah, that that one. All right, any questions for iterating through a dictionary? I think this is a pretty important concept on iterating a dictionary. It's not as easy as iterating lists, but it can be quite useful. If everyone understands, maybe a thumbs up. Only the is th uh, thumbs up. So is there everyone else lost? Are you guys okay? Hello? There's no so-so button. Hmm. If so-so, then just clap law. I mean like if you want to learn more practice law, there's no other way than practicing. Okay, if you guys are so-so, I mean that's good enough lah. So, okay, can. All right, I'll just move on. Um, Next part is uh, deleting dictionaries. So in this case, you can actually delete stuff. So for example, this is our dictionary B over here, right? This is our dictionary B. All right, um, we can actually delete um, some parts of it by actually calling the index and just like say del. So if you see what's gonna happen is it's just gonna delete it. Okay, okay it's just gonna delete it. Oof, it's gone. It's actually gone. So uh, previous gone. Okay. But then remember, because it's a dictionary, you cannot delete it by index. So if you delete the v two right, it's gonna produce an error. Okay, key error. So I'll just comment it out since it's gonna produce an error. Oh, good question. Can you delete the value? Yeah. So yeah, you cannot delete. Uh, can you delete the value of the key? What do you mean by deleting the value of the key? So like you delete the key, but then the value still exists. Is it? I delete the value, but the key exists. Then to delete the key, this is the way to do it. Though. Like, uh, like line 17, you need to delete it. In this case, the key will not exist anymore. If you try to call dig b23, right, it will not exist anymore. Okay. So next up is basically the fun part, lah. like basically uh, if you want to check whether an item inside the uh, inside the keys or values, you basically convert it to like take p dot keys. You can 
print it as a tuple, or you can just like list take p dot values. You can get the values. Okay, just make sure that you convert it to a tuple or list first, so it's it can be processed. All right. Uh, any questions so far? If there are no questions, maybe just a thumbs up again. Any questions? None. Can we delete the keys using the value? No, we cannot. We cannot delete the keys using the value. In a way, you can. You kind of can hack it, hack your way. Like, you can just like you know iterate through, uh, dig dot items, and then like you just do an if else statement. Like if item is equal to the item that you want to delete, then you just keep, uh, take note of the key, and then after the iteration is done, you then uh delete the key. Role. Like for example, um, yeah, key. So like, say I have like to be deleted, it's like to be deleted value is uh, it's four, and like if b is equal to to be deleted value, to And like uh, k uh, to be deleted key is equal to k, and then basically tell it. something like this. Can I delete keys in a se sequence? Odd index of keys deleted. Um, again, as I mentioned before, dictionaries does not have some a natural ordering, so you cannot like just like delete odd index or uh, even index. I mean, if you do that, you would probably want to use a list instead of a dictionary. So it's not really a proper data structure. Hey, by the way, if I answered your question, just say okay, I okay or thank you or something in the Zoom chat, because like. After you ask, I, I explain that I don't know whether my explanation is good or not. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Okay. My God, Derek. All right, anyways, let's move on to the next part. It's the part that sent you guys crazy last week with lists. Is mutability, okay? So please, please, please pay very close attention to your screen. I know some of you are connected via your phones, and because like I can see via my participants, like only like your microphone is connected and your video is not connected, and I'm perfectly fine with that. But then, yeah, don't expect me to explain it like verbally, okay? That's the reason why we do like all these screen sharing thing. So I have this dictionary C over here, right? Where the dictionary C is that it has uh, two objects, key one and key four, and then the values is like another dictionary over here and five. Okay, so I print the dictionary one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think this looks okay. This should be okay already, right? And then next, I'm going to do a shallow copy. I'm going to do a shallow copy of dictionary C. And if you can see, right, it, uh, now we have created a new dictionary D that uh, copies dictionary C. Now my question to you guys is, what will dictionary C print in line eight? What will it print in line eight? Answers. If you guys actually, uh, if you guys have your concept strong last week, then um, you should be able to do this. Uh.
okay, there's someone that say, Hai Hong say like the value of three here will change to nine. Uh, Angel mentions that it's not gonna change. Jeremy also say that it's gonna change. Any other answers? Okay, if there's none, then let's let's find out. So first, uh, we'll change this dictionary D four to nine, right? And if you can see, as expected, the dictionary C here doesn't change; it only changes dictionary D. So if you can see, right, there's no link between the four in dictionary C and the four in dictionary D, because it's a shallow copy, meaning that the value is just copied over; it just creates a new object and hence it can be replaced. Now here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do dictionary seven, uh, line seven. So what we're gonna change is actually, uh, we access dictionary D1, which is basically this dictionary over here, this dictionary over here. And then it's gonna change the value to two, nine. So yeah, oh, then I, I was too fast. So initially from three, and then I change it to nine. So you see here, right, in line seven, what happens is that I'm, I don't change the value of dictionary C, okay? At line seven, seven, dictionary, dictionary C does not change. Dictionary D does not change either. What changes is the dictionary here that's just floating in the object space? So what can we conclude here is that, so if we print, yeah, as expected, it's one, two, nine, four, five. <coughs> so what can we learn here, right? As just like this, right? If what we store here is not <coughs> the actual dictionary, what we store here is actually the address. So when we cop do a shallow copy, right, from dictionary C to dictionary T, right, we copy the pointer. not the dictionary, okay? So hence, when we execute line seven, right, nothing changes. The address stays the same. It's the same dictionary, but we're just changing the dictionary, this particular dictionary over here, this dictionary in red circle. Are there any questions regarding immutability in dictionaries? It's very, it's the same with list, lah. Any questions? Seriously guys, like, are you guys okay? I mean like, if you guys uh, are good with last week's concept, I think this week's concept is, should be easier to grasp. Awkward silence. Okay, if everyone's okay, then maybe can you guys give me a thumbs up? Okay, so I think there's a lot of you that's just like so-so. Uh, okay, I assume that whoever does a clap is so-so and the, the ones who do times up understands. So the rest, where are you guys going? Okay, for, so for Dick 4, right, you won't change the copy for Dick C. La. Dick C, ah, yes, you won't change. Because like, technically when I copy the value, right, since it's a, what we call, since it's an integer, right, it's, we just copy it over. We just create a new integer instead. We're not. So yeah, this is. Um, when we do this, right? When we do this copy over here, this. Oh wait. Uh, oh. Yeah. When we do this copy, right? These two number fives, right? Are two separate fives, lah. There are two. Like both are number fives, but those two are two different numbers. Because they are called primitive data types. Uh. Primitive data types are strings, integers, floats, the basic ones. Wait, what does dig D49 do? Basically, it calls dictionary D4 at index at, at key four over here. And basically I replace the value with nine. I reassign the value. Just like list, like, it's just like list, having list like 0, 1, 2, 3, then like list uh, 
2 equals to 9. So I'll change this to 9. Yes, correct, Joseph. So yeah, for key one, the pointer, we do shallow copy. We copied only the address, not like the make. Uh, why is it so? Because it is the way it is. Uh. Like that one is like, it is more like the feature of copy. So copy just like copies whatever is on the first layer. It doesn't see what's inside it. Uh. If there's any list or dictionaries inside the values, right? it doesn't check. It just like copies whatever, the, everything. Yeah, so you call the key for dictionary instead, not index. Yeah, in the case of a dictionary, it's the key, not the index. Yeah, so Joseph, asked, answering your question, the copy, why is it so... Um, I mean, my best answer is, it is what it is. Uh. Because it's just like that. Yeah, it is what it is. Mm, any questions? I think no. Because like, technically, we're already done with the first part already. Like, that's all for the first part. Okay, if there's nothing, then let's ask, check your knowledge with um, part two of anagram. So at part two of anagram here, I think if you guys haven't read the question, please do read the question. Uh, I'll try to send it in the telegram group, uh, in the Zoom chat. Okay, uh, I've created this code share as again for you guys to share your answers. So after this, I'm going to break you guys into breakout rooms for you guys to discuss, to create a code and discuss the answer, okay? Just make sure your code is, for this one, right, your code should be less than 10 lines, lah, supposedly. If it's more than 10 lines, then you are overcomplicating things. Okay, um, I'm just going to pause the recording here. All right, uh... Why do you do I search for a Chinese circular table? Because if someone asks about the PE for last semester, right, I'll need that uh, Chinese circular table to explain. Anyways, hi friends, welcome back. Um, please uh, just copy your code over. I only see like three anagram questions, anagram code here, and I'm expecting around 10. So I'm not so sure what you guys are doing there, like maybe like doing some chit chat or some gossiping. I'm okay with that, but those who actually did the code, please help me and copy your code over. And we'll just go through and see what you guys have. Uh. Just like, it's just interesting to see how different people attempt the question dif in different approaches, showing that it's actually pretty hard. Um, show that when uh, two co codes are identical, it is highly likely that they both plagiarize. Uh. But then, yeah, we'll try to see. Uh. Okay, okay I guess if there's only like three functions, then we'll just do it three, okay? But yeah, anyone other than this, anyone want to copy, please, 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 I beg you. Okay, so we'll analyze the first one. I think that first one is very nice. Like the first one, I'm not so sure who wrote this, so I'm just going to explain it. I think, I assume the person want to be anonymous. If you don't, maybe you can voice out your voice. Okay, then I'll just explain so I guess the first one is um, standardizing the text. Um, by like doing like uh, remove white space and then uh, send everything to lowercase. And sometimes like data, when you are dealing with strings, uh, pre-processing is quite important, even if you're working in data science. So yeah, actually it's pretty good. And then basically the first one is your first fail safe. I copied from Wednesday tutorial, lol, okay. Thanks though. First fail safe. Um, basically checking like if, if length is different, then confirm not anagram. But then, but then there's a condition here. Remember that this this one only applies if the white space has been removed. If it has not been removed, then it's quite problematic, Because then like some words might have more spaces than the other. 
and then else then you create a dictionary all right and then like you basically this one is the fun part like if the key is not created yet in the dictionary then you simply create the key and assign it to one else you just plus one so i think this one is good this is funny, very funny all right next up we have hi hong uh uh hi hong would you like to explain your code to the class please 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 i'm tired teaching um how how do i explain <laughs> Uh, maybe just like explain like which what each line of your code does so it's okay and like yeah please yeah so the first line just create two dictionaries and then like put each word into the dictionary without spaces um you know a dictionary has to have a key and a value so uh i think the so uh, because it is an unordered thing, so whatever you put in there, as long as they have the same elements, they are they can be compared whether they are the same. So just put them into dictionaries. It doesn't matter, like which I don't know which key or value to use. I guess you just put put uh, each letter into the dictionary so i just make the key and value the the same one whatever ah, okay. not bad i mean this code is almost correct but then uh it's okay it's okay i mean like if you see here right, the problem is that you assign like the key the like if i okay i'll just run like for example if i have like uh word one is like a a b c and then like word two is like a b c we know that these two are not anagrams, right? But your code, right? Your dictionary one will actually be uh, something like this, uh, like uh, A equals to A. Then like uh, B equals to B. And then like C equals to C. And then same for dictionary two. It, it's gonna be exactly the same. Oh, oh I get it. so the dictionary will just get rid of the repeated elements. So, correct. So, how do you account for the repeated elements? Can anyone provide a suggestion on how to improve the code? There's a very easy fix for this. Uh, learn is still not good. Learn, learn right. If you do something like this, right, A A B B C, like the learn is the same, but then you cannot, you don't know. Uh, thanks, Yeh Yeh. So what you wanna do is actually you wanna count the number of characters in each word. So like in the dictionary, right, you store actually like the number of characters for each word. So in this case, perhaps like instead of assigning the the character itself, you count in your word one. How many characters do you have? How many ca I is is inside word one? Same here. What we want to do is like word two count. Okay. So yeah, this is a way to fix it. Okay. Now I have a question. I have a question, right? This this seems redundant. Like we need to go to word one and we need to go to word two. Like my question is, why don't we just like okay, I'll just copy a new code. Okay, this one don't forget that. Create a new code. Why don't I just remove this part and just like do this? So I iterate through the characters inside word one. And then like I'll just simply count in word one and both word two. And if both are the same, then if both are the same, then it's already uh anagram. Do you know what's wrong with this? Anyone? I is not an index. It it is um an element in the um, no, that's not the problem here. That's actually not the problem. Any other such, any other ideas why this might be wrong? I think 
it, the best way is to exemplify with an example. Lah. Like, um, say A, A, B, C, right? What if the second, second word right, is A, A, B, C, D? Or perhaps, or perhaps uh, maybe like A, B, C, D. So if you go through like the word one, right, if you go through the characters of word one, right, this will only like, it will give us like A, B, and C. Hence in both dictionaries, right, in both dictionaries, it will also give us like A, B, and C. It's quite problematic lah, in this case. Sometimes it can work, sometimes, I think this one doesn't work. This one doesn't work lah, because then you cannot detect that there's D inside word two, inside the word two. Okay, so be careful. Sometimes you need to always check both sides. I mean, in a way, yeah, like this one can be hacked by just like doing like length. You can do like a quick check, like len str1 equals to len str2. So, yeah, just be careful. Lah. So, what does this do is that uh, basically when we have like, uh, so okay, when I so what does this do is that when when i equals to a right dictionary dictionary one right is initially an empty dictionary right this will change to uh, a equals to equals to the value of this and then when, then when I iterate next, I is B, dictionary B, which is now this, will change to B, then like you do a word, so B is equals to word count B. Does that answer your question, Ye Chie? Oh, word count. Mm, I mean, that's that's where you should Google. Basically, uh, it, it basically it counts the number of characters, the number of this inside your string lah. I mean, you can always check in the internet lah. Right? Oh, this one is quite bad. Uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, this one is better. I think I'll just copy this. Is this webcasted? Yes, this is webcasted. I think I've every every week I always say like this is webcasted. I mean like this is a lot of Python tutorials now that you guys can do. A bit excessive, but yeah, you can do this. Anyways, yeah, thanks, Yay. Uh, thanks. Oh, what's happening? Thanks, uh, Hai Hong, for the code. And oh, there's a few codes. Okay, I think we'll see. Same here, you convert to lowercase, you create a dictionary. Then, if the key exists, then if the key exists, then simply like from the key, you can just like plus one. If not, you can just assign it to, you can in, initiate, instantiate the key. You create the key and then like do, assign it to one. Is anagram over here same standardization? This one is actually the same with our code earlier. Well done. And this one on the bottom. Oh, thank you. Uh, but I don't think this is gonna work, anyways. All right. So we are. So I think that's all for anagram. I really do hope that there was a good exercise for how to use dictionaries. Again, for T9, we'll not discuss, we're not gonna discuss it today. So um, if you guys really need help, I can help, but then try to do it on your own. So that's the end of today's tutorial. Um, just FYI, I will not record the Q&A session. 
So if you guys, uh, whatever happens during the Q&A session regarding the PE, it will not be recorded. It's just only until this point will be recorded.